Good morning. The most difficult part of our discussion of time complexity is the computation of t of n, the timing function for the code fragment. Once the timing function is known, it is quite easy to characterize the growth of the algorithm, but some simpler and with some simpler and more recognizable function. In this lecture, we will explore several examples to illustrate our concept of time complexity applied to computer algorithms. Example one, find the time complexity of the code fragment in figure one. What we have is a function max, and if a is greater than b, we return a, else we return b. So we use our three column mechanism here with line, code, and cost. And we have a cost of one, which is the comparison uh, for a greater than b in on line two. There's no cost for a program epilogue in on lines three and five or return and no cost elsewhere as well. Example two, find the time complexity of function find max in figure two that finds the maximum value in the, in the array of integers given by two parameters a and n. Int find max. So what we do is we uh, assign an arbitrary value, uh, a of 0 to max, and then we proceed to test each element to see if it's the maximum element. So in our uh, time complexity table, uh, the cost of calling find max is 0. The cost of assigning uh, local variable max, the value in uh, index position 0 is 1 just one assignment. The cost of assigning 1 to i is 1. The cost of the while statement on line 4 is the number of times that the while statement is executed when i is less than n if that value is true. And that starts when i equal 1 and ends when uh, i is equal to n minus 1 because when i is equal to n, n is not less than n. So that happens n minus 1 times. Then we look at the if statement. If uh, a of i is greater than max, there's one comparison there, then max is uh, assigned a of i. So there are two operations there. They are the greater than and the assignment. So what we need to do is we need to assume that both operations are executed every time for the worst case deal. And since we know that the statement is executed k times, because that's how many times a i is less than n, we can assign a cost of 2k to this. Similarly, uh, when we increment i, that also happens k times. We exit the loop once to return max costs nothing, and we compute here at the end that uh, t of n is equal to 4n minus 1. Example 3. Find the time complexity of find sum in figure 3 that exercises a nested loop. So I've called it the same find sum. It has an integer value n and uh, we have an a loop and inside the a loop we have a b loop. Uh, notice that the uh, B loop starts out at N and is decremented one each time until it gets just above A. So when we come over here to evaluate our find sum, we've changed our for loops into while loops, and so we can analyze we can analyze this. When zero is assigned to sum, we count the cost of the assignment one. When n is assigned to a, we count the cost of the assignment, 1. And then the while loop is executed from 1 to n. Uh, so that turns out to be n times. Uh, n is assigned to b, j, uh, n, n is assigned to b uh, n times, or I put the variable j there, which is also n. And then how many times is b greater than a? Well, uh, 
b is greater than a when a is when b is a plus one through n. Since this is a nested loop, we're going to have a nested double summation from a equal one to n, the first summation, and from b equal a plus one to n of the second summation. There's one statement that's executed each time. So our value here in the uh, operand section of the summation is one. We increment uh, sum every time that happens. So that happens k times. b minus minus, it's b is decremented k times. We exit the loop j times. We increment, we decrement a j times, and we exit the a loop one time. So to compute k, first we evaluate um, the uh, inner uh, loop. And so um, what we have is the bottom is a plus 1 and the top is n, but it's inclusive. So it's n minus uh, the quantity a plus 1 plus 1 to include the, both n's. And so what we come out with is k is the sum from a equal 1 to n of n minus a, which we can split apart into the sum from a equal 1 to n of n minus the sum from a equal 1 to n of a. So when this comes out, what we get is uh, the sum from a equal 1 to n of n is just merely n squared. And the sum from a equal 1 to n of of a is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus so on, which we know as n times n plus 1 over 2. And we subtract that from n, uh, arriving at 1 half n squared minus 1 half n. So t of n is 3k plus 4j. So n we, uh, or k we determined was equal to 1 half n squared minus n, and uh, j was just n. So we finally arrive at 3 halves n squared plus 5 halves n plus 3. So here we're going to find the time complexity of counting iterations. We just have a simple loop here. While n greater than 1, where we pass n, n is equal to n divided by 2. So we don't know how many times this, uh, this loop is executed. So we put k there. Well, however many times this loop is executed true, then this statement n is divided by n is equal as n is assigned n divided by 2 is there are two operations there, so it's 2k. So we're going to use uh, some of our previous modules uh, learning there. We're going to write a recurrence relation for n uh, for n sub i, that is the value of n sub i for the ith iteration. So what we know is n sub i plus 1 is equal to n sub i divided by 2, where uh, n sub k is limited, uh, must be to, where the kth value must be limited between 0 and 1. n sub 0 equal n sub p, where p signifies parameter, the initial value of n, n sub naught, is the value of n passed as the parameter of the function. n2 is equal to n 1 over 2 is equal to n sub naught over 2, which is equal to n sub naught over 4. We can see that n sub that n2 is n sub naught over 2 squared. And in general, n sub k is equal to n sub naught over 2 to the k. Also, we know that the k that in the kth iteration, n is less than or equal to 1, and the loop terminates. Assume n sub k is equal to 1 so that we can set uh, our iteration n sub 0 or over 2 to the k equal to 1, and then we can find n sub 0 is equal to 2 to the k, and k is equal to log to the base 2 of n sub 0. Now k is an integer value, and log to the base 2 n sub 0 does not always produce an integer value. Therefore, k is the ceiling of log 2 of n 0, or k is the floor. The question is, which is it? Let's try a few values of n and see if we can find a pattern. So here's the value of k. Here's n, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, 
when k is when n is zero, the log two is undefined. Uh, when k is two, then both the ceiling and floor are one. When k is three, uh, we the floor is uh, the ceiling is two and the floor is one, and so on. So our various k seems to track the floor value here rather than the ceiling. So it appears that uh, that k is equal to the floor of log two n sub naught. So in general, whenever I divide, whenever I iteratively divide a value by two, and that's controlled in the loop deal then that's going to be a logarithmic function. And the base of the log is going to be the value that is divided by. In other words, if we were dividing by 4, it would be log 4. If we were dividing by 52, it would be log 52. Example 5. Find the time complexity of function exponential count in figure 5. So here I've got a for loop, and I do sum is assigned sum times 2. And I change the for loop to a while loop, and uh, I do sum is sum divided by two, and then I do this. So we, the the real question here is this: uh, these last two. I can I can figure out how many times these are are executed, but I don't know how many times uh, the sum is greater than zero is is uh, is there. So I'm just going to call it k. The sum loop iterates over the values of the sum down to 1. We can say that the sum loop executes sometimes. Since the sum loop executes sometimes, we can say that k and sum have the same value. So here's something that we can say. Sum sub 0 is equal to 1, and sum sub i plus 1 is equal to 2 times sum. Therefore, what we can find out is by using the mechanisms of our last module that sum sub i is equal to 2 to the i and k is equal to 2 to the n. Therefore, t to the n is equal to 2 times 2 to the n plus 4n plus 4. 